What's up, guys? Um, we're back for Valhalla after three years of death <laughs> and height. We've re we've resurrected to be the final bosses of our next Dark Souls encounter. All right, that is true. <laughs> Are we so, playing Dark Souls next? Nathaniel's not with us, so we have a bit of a situation going on with voices. They're going to be rotating to different people you may be able to figure out who they are just by listening we won't bother to go through the list yeah yeah all right so jill's power didn't get cut this gives her peace of mind now she'll focus at work with no problem have a nice day all right everything's set up we're good to go i don't feel like reading anything nope jill doesn't have to buy anything for i think I didn't you have a boyfriend named bill oh yeah bill Nye, i'm a science guy I feel like you said that last time. I did. If it, if it ain't dead, kill, kick it harder. <laughs> what? What the hell's wrong with you, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Someone knock off the light, please. <laughs> right Lamp right next please. to you. <laughs> Thank you. Good Ooh. evening. Uh, hey, Joe. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I won't say good, but... Not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Gil? Did he run away again? Nah, no, I have my errand duty. Buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds weird. Coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of my, our own funds. So if we're going to spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kinds of walks are always good for Gil. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us. The dogs. You invited Titty Hacker. Gil invited Jamie. Oh, yeah. I also invited Dor Dorothy when you called her to spend the night with you. Oh, yeah. I also invited Dor Dorothea when, you, when I called her to spend the night with you. Hmm. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting. The more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me should anything arise. All right. Yo. Okay. Not Why really touching anything. Just gonna keep it as is. I think everything's good for the playlist. Or jukebox. <laughs> Oh, I should show you the Valhalla um, VR chat world. It's pretty dope. Ooh. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Wait here. I'll check inside. Welcome oh. to Valhalla. Oh. oh, fuck. Which one do we do? Which one? I think I'm the one on the left. Okay. Who's talking? <laughs> oh, a BTC bar. Excuse me. Do you know where the... Athena Convention Center is. Why does that place make people get lost so easily? They should just have called it the Minotaur Center. What? Oh! She looks exactly like the one on the screen. Huh. Well, they are cosplayers, I believe. Interesting. Hold on. Let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Aren't we in, like, the f future? You can just, like... Oh, anyways. Go to the right. When you see a building filled with hobos, this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. Uh, what the hell? <clears throat> I'll have a drink. What about you? Um, a brantini, please. Right. The girl asked for a brantini. The Lilum freaks me out. Cool, I got the best character ever. No, nope, so he doesn't speak. <laughs> 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 Done. <laughs> because you would be the person freaking people out. I believe these guys are just one encounter. Or ladies. Or lady. Lady and, lady and Lilum. Lady and yes. Aged. I'm just gonna call everybody yes. Yes. Hey, yes. I don't identify as yes. I am no. Here you are. Thanks. 
That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, miss. Well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Vela for the time being. And your Lilum friend is? Oh. Essentia? Essentia? Essentia. Essentia. Essentia, I would say. Essen okay. Should I go quiet? Yeah. Essentia. <laughs> I get it. You're cosplaying too. Sure. Let's go with that. Oh. Have you, have you heard of a game called Yik, Bartender? That cult classic game that has been, like, that has seen, like, three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? That one. We're in a cosplay group dedicated to it. And we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh, yeah. A friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told them to wait outside. Shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. Is something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, wax sailor uniform, missing her arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. She can see the ghost. Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook. You might be speaking too quiet. Spook. Your mic's not picking yeah. it up. Yeah, spook. Spook. Anything else? I'll get a fluffy... I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. Yeah! Vela asked for a fluffy dream. All right, so three Adel Hide, three Powder Delta. You know, just and spike that boy. Why are we spiking the drink? I don't know. <laughs> we spike. Oh. That looks a bit too fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fluffy. Here. Yep, this is the thing. Uh, Damn, I got dizzy pretty fast. I better stop here. Now that I think about it, just who are you, um, Sentia? Isn't she your friend? I guess. I don't know. Oh god, I took her memories. Oh shit! Just kind of met her in a convention, and she stuck with me ever since. Oh. Oh. Uh. She also seems off, like she's missing something or thinking too much. Interference. Soul synchronization. Well, I won't hold you any longer. We should go. Goodbye. I wonder if she's like one of the earlier models. She likes a personality. Please, come again. Oh, yeah, probably. Why the hell are you on the floor? <laughs> Taste? Buy the vending machines? I wonder if he said something to piss off Didi or Bobo. Black sailor uniform. I hope I'm not just overthinking it. More importantly, though, jean under a skirt. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey, Dorothy. Rip Brandon. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Yo. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Can Lilum just wander? Can I get you anything? Oh, uh, a sugar rush. Yeah, that. You're right. Dorothy seems down. She asked for a sugar rush. But hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? Um, do you want the drink that cheers her up? Blue Fairy. Let me just make sure I'm not second guessing myself. If I see it, it'll click in my mind. Okay. One blue fairy for the pink pixie. Ah. Hope this is right. Oh well. Yeah, we'll find out one way or another. Do we spike it? Heck yeah. 
Clark Brandon. Piano Woman. Piano Woman? Okay. It's the piano. Man. Or anything sweet or girly. It's a piano woman. Yeah, probably Piano Woman will do. $320. Alright, time to make Dorothy a woman. Xavier? Why yeah, they went to me green. Two, three, four, five. I can count. I promise. Uno, dos, choice, cuanto, cinco. There we go. Sweet, promo, happy. Here you go. This is... Didn't you say you like having a piano woman whenever you felt like celebrating or feeling down? I did? Wait, I did. You actually remembered such a thing. Oh, no. You're so sweet. Wow, that mouth is open pretty wide. Oh, she's gaping pretty hot. Wait. I was half expecting her to say that she meant a literal piano woman. Glad I was wrong. So much silence. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. So, did you enjoy your soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, but don't go around telling everyone about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help, but a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. What? It is? Hey, don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. Do you want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, then. You were sad, and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I mean it. Thanks. Although, I've wondered for a while, why do Lilum... Do you, Lilum, really understand death? Sorta. Kinda. Our whole database is cons constantly being backed up in the collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So, our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. You seem quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously though, those laws were bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I mean sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book? If I remember correctly, those were only those were the only distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over 100 years ago. Ah, oh yes, that's a good movie. They were redu they were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took them took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need and use it on use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. 
Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know. It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute! What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost, at least I wanted to be able to yell, FOUR! It happened once. You'd be surprised by how many golf players you'd run into. And every time you play with them, you can say it's four play. <laughs> We're going out. <laughs> yeah. He was also named after someone. Really? Who? A Lilum kid that wanted to transcend. What? A movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Hmm. Do you want anything else? Let's see, if you know me that well, give me something I'd like. Okay then. WWDO. Fuck. What? Nobody? What would the order? I mean, it's gonna be a piano one. That's the easiest one. Uh, you sure? You sure? Yeah. Right? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. A blue fairy or a piano woman. Those are the things I've served her, okay? They are a piano blue. woman again. Yeah. Uh, there's a double piano woman. You can do anything you served Dorothy before. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, just some of these questions. Face value is fine. Unless it's Virgilio. That dude needs to go in a hole. Oh, he's gonna be back today, Brandon? With his fedora and a no. plum. Thank God. Here. Good. But that's cheating. You just served me this drink. Still right, isn't it? Yep. I still can't believe you actually remembered what I said about the piano woman. It's always good to keep note of what regulars like, you know. I've wondered for a while, though. Why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course. Come again? Why else would I come if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out, always filled with curiosity. And you're cute. Talking to cute people is always nice. There's also the bar, the way it's insulated from the noise of the city. It's really comfortable. And it's just a bit away from the street I'm always at. A win-win situation. I see. It was weird to see you down, though. Especially since you're always so lively. Well, I wasn't down, really. I was just thinking about a lot of things. Like what? Well, my mom, uh, Guardian, asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. And as much as I love her, being with her is usually tiring. Guardian. The whole thing about someone taking care of a Lilum after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yep, and I'm proud to say that I reached psychological maturity in just one year. They always try and keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source grow faster. So what's wrong with your guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. Oh, huh? Dead daughter? I was deployed to her not long after she lost her daughter. A contrived coincidence, really. Uh, this is a reference to a movie, by the way. It is? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a movie about uh, a mother who lost her son, or her son uh, was in a coma. And uh, she got a new son to take care of. Well, she got this robot to take care of. And he was a robot. 
Wait, I think I know what we were talking about. Yeah, it, it's a it's a really crazy movie. What's I think movie? I know what you're talking about. Damn. We can check it out sometime. I mean, yeah. I want to check out Pan's Life. Not gonna lie. This is you. Yeah, I know. I know the movie we talk about. Wasn't a husband and a wife, and the kid was, and the kid, and, and the, I know the mother was a blonde woman. You can check it out again. Oh my god, it, I it's know an the older movie. movie. It's an I older know the movie. movie. Yeah. Damn. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't, though, or at least not consciously. At times she would just stop doing something or return a gift she's given me. If she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter onto me. What irony that years later, I'd make a living pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? Well, most of the time my job involves role playing. A daughter, a student some helpless kid it means I've gotten many clients looking exactly for that but on the other hand from a professional standpoint I'd rather have them hire me because of me because of my character not because I'm the one that role plays as little girls maybe I need to exaggerate some attribute What's the problem with your guardian, then? If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I fear she might look at me and see her daughter, that seeing me makes her sad. At this point, I don't even care if she's projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want to make her feel sad. Sorry about that, sped up a little bit. Did you try talking to with her? How so? Telling her just what you said to me. Clear up those fears. I mean, unless she's not the kind of per unless she's not the kind to want anyone opening up to her, that is. I never really thought about talking to her about that. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up though. Keep it in mind. At least, maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is mostly with me, I think. Well then, I'm taking my break. Oh. I'll be leaving then. No. What I was trying to say is that I'm taking my break. You want to come? Really? If you don't mind, talking on a chilly night in the alley behind the bar, that is. Eh, I've done worse in alleys. Let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Alright. Yo, Brain, you back? Bro, Gil is such a Chad, man. Chad Chanton? He needs to be the next protagonist. Oh god, Favorite, make it, a Valhalla too. It just going is oh god. Just have Gil in a bar or run in the bar. It just it's just his his past comes back to haunt him on a daily basis. Oh fuck. For Gilio like shows up about like every single day. <laughs> Where's my money, kid? What do you mean? It's now safe to keep paying. I was about to say paying. <laughs> hey, yeah, pay more money. Get paid. Pay. Pay to win. Want one? Are you really offering me a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl? I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyway, thanks. No. Smoking seriously messes up with my air filters and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me, though. Smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So, why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I want to know what kind of woman she is. Sure. 
Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Graham? She's a retired PE teacher. Nowadays, she's, she works at a gym during the morning shift. She's a pretty fit, if I do say so myself. She had a daughter. Apparently, she suffered from nanomachine rejection all of her life. And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Excuse me. Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. Are you okay? I'm reading fear, or is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine. Yeah. Wait, read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body heat readings, face registrate, re recognition, and context. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you're sure you're fine? Yeah, yeah. Scared or surprised? She's not wrong, though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic, and that's what people usually look for in this business. Why did I just think of a porn star named Hayes? Why do you think of my name? I'm sure really cribs it. I tried other names, though. Dolores Hayes. Genesis Graham. Ew. Oh. I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. So, what's your legal name, then? Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. A bit of a mouthful, if you ask me. So, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Dorothy's actually your second name? Okay, so I'm about to drop a little bit of lore. Um, you know how Dorothy mentioned a girl getting ran over? And um, you know uh the Lilum who just uh mentioned they saw a girl wearing jeans under a skirt? That's uh that's the same girl who haunts Jim Jill. That that girl that no one else can see but Jill. So um Wait, with what drive? the game gives us, it's, Wait, the... it, it's possible to believe that that is her. Wait, the kid drive voice? That yeah, was... at the very beginning. <laughs> Who said boo? Boo! What the fuck? I was thinking, like, that was her, like, ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. it was like nano no. machine rejection that like the ex girlfriend like died. Oh, from. No, that's, the, no. the reason they creeped Jill out was because it was too relatable. Like yeah. what happened? Should I call you something like Becky then? People have always called me Dorothy, rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I choose it. It's useful to. It's useful too. People have tried to falsify stuff using my name, and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name? Yep. Only my mom, uh, Guardian, calls me Rebecca. So it's weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my Guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I was w left with his family name first. Hold on, so your real name in short would be Rebecca Willow? Doesn't have the same pizzazz to it, if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it. It'd be like if you called, if I called you Julianne all of a sudden. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Whoa, that was anger I read just now. Lots of anger. I think it's weird enough already if you called me Jill instead of Honey. Uh, weird, huh? 
How can you end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours? I have an uncle that always called me Tina. He kept calling my cousin Tina Jill. He kept, call- he kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us minded, though, because he's calling us what he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That and it's completely useless to try and correct him. But, you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients, too. How so? Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? But think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played as by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going to go for the act are also going for the actor playing the character. So you're saying they go for my role play instead of just mere role play. Sounds too far fetched. Sounds plausible actually. Actually Okay, honey. I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up all of your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. Peace. I need to remember to buy more cigars. You mean cigarettes, not cigars. Maybe she is throwing blunts in. I think she said, wait, what? Just micro blunts. (laughs) You see Jill rolling the stack. Back. Did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PvPV main event fight I've seen all year? Not really, no. Oh, let's make this a little more. There we go. There we go. Alright. Didn't know you could change that. We, we, we could change this, Xavier. Going out? I have a word of Gogo outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must be devastated. She's talking about the vending machine. Okay. Yo, that vending machine. You see Donna talking to a vending machine? She just lost waifu points. Bro, she crazy. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, I say. Oh, no. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. Um, oh. Um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally close. The scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today. But I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Be right up. Oh snap! Piano. It's that song you hear when a basic any drink of ice. It's, it's that song you hear when Gil's walking oh, no, up wait, to the bank. No ice. Piano man. Oh, piano man. She went the piano man. That's the most expensive one we can give her, right? Yeah, on the rocks. Cool. Hey, let's, let's, let's go give Stella that nice fireball. Imagine walking up to like a fictional bank and you're strapped. How strapped are we talking? Like guns across the waist and an AK on your back. Whoa. Do I have enough ammo? Okay, this is funny. This is a funny thought I had while I was like in the car. Like, I was thinking about how like Joker like buys all the, these weapons for his team, right? And then like uh, EY will occasionally say, why are, you, why are you looking at them so hard? You know, like, because you're going to need these to like protect your life and like kill these shadows. And I just imagine like uh, Joker walking out of the store with like guns across like several holisters across his waist, like melee weapons strapped to his back and like two submachine guns in his hands. And the cops are just looking at him like, uh, can we get some backup over here? <laughs> and, and Joker starts running down the street. <laughs> he's in the Joker shit, shit, run. Shit, shit, <laughs> shit, shit. shit, shit. <laughs> no, Gabriel, he's in the Joker run. Oh my God. Stop. Stop. I hate this so much. 
Here. Yeah, this is the one. Why drink something cold when the weather outside is cold, too? It's not that cold, actually. But I've always had decent tolerance for the cold. So I'm not... A good reference. Sorry about that. So, Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow and is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I, I want you to know that I want you to have a good time. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in our honor. <laughs> I will. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big. That There's lots of food and drinks and music. Oh yeah, Stella's rich. And I also just remembered that it's Christmas Eve. Yes. Sometimes there's too much food, though. So at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have been s have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Huh. Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she most likely cel celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though. I just don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to parties that Stella is attending, because otherwise I just stand there without anything to say. That, and I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not? I'm a tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Although, with all the ceiling, I have to do. I won't be as fit for a while. They're too... Um... Breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Last time I wore one, I remember wearing my arms too thin or something like that. We all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She distresses a lot about her bust size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious. Okay, I'm gonna restart that. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Ones that could fill my bathtub. Although, I'm, I guess comparisons are useless here. They rarely help with complexes. Are you going to see the same stuff I sent Xavier? Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before and after she tucks them away, but... I guess I never cared about that. That's also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those... Um... Curls. Drills. Drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? I was gonna say coils. 
She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. She seems affluent enough. Why not go through a reduction sur surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size. She takes her bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmen is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Stella has quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like portraying her. Hmm. I'm making it sound like she's hiding J cups or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Just like sucking those boys in. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm really? Sucking in those. <laughs> sucking those in. My God. Four when, she two. when she releases, she shoots like a air bullet. <laughs> but then explode off. I guess on a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter or thinner than the norm. That's how. Short you stack? No, 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 no. I'm, she's, I'm but she's not, not a short stack. I won't say anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you get self conscious about your bus size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self conscious about my height. Although it usually comes up whenever, and whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no. It's not my bus size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine. Don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Huh. Do you have something non-alcoholic? I do. Give me a second. Well, here it is. Oh, man. Really nice conversation Leading today. Jane. Oh, leading Jane. Ooh, more money. Huh? Oh. Leading Jane. Money. I mean, we, we, these we can find. We're, we're okay. I will. But um, it's really nice, these conversations we're having. Like, talking about family, complex issues at home. Self-conscious. I mean, we all, we all have yeah, And self-conscious things, too. Like, things people usually rather not talk about themselves. It really shows, like, yeah. how well Jill gets along with her clients. We have complex. There's nothing to hide. It's easy to say. I know I have a complex, that's for sure. Too damn thin. Let's see, a few more of those, too. All right, here. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least, making my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. I just heard Bill Cosby's voice in the distance. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Usually people like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget about their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't. It doesn't sound logical, on paper. But then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain could cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Oh, I feel like I get along with Joe. Yeah, I've, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. <clears throat> There's also a matter of addiction, you know? You start just liking to drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy. It'll just be me, Boss, Gil, and a couple other regulars. 
they'll bring food. We'll chat for a while. And that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness Della is throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, say? Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check on one last errand before going home. No, I mean, what do you plan on doing now, with the White Knights being disbanded and all? To be honest, I don't know. I never prepared a plan B, because I figured if you can go with a plan B, why not just make it the plan A? What? What? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college. Or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. It's paperwork, too. <clears throat> and I'm tired of blatant corruption. Sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm. I learned something after the Helen Apollo Trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Clawing my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please, come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Mr. Detective. Ah, hey there, girl. <laughs> Brian is like scrolling through his cards now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a strong drink, won't you? Alright. I'll strengthen you. Okay. I have something That's strong now again. Bradley. Oh, ooh, cervix spike. It's both of them. What about There's some Mars manly blast. ones, I guess. Mars Blast? Would like, that work? The, yeah, the manly ones are definitely... Yeah. yeah. 80, 170. Yeah, that was tougher. Bronson Extract. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2. Blended. When I think of blended, I think of a blender. Spicy, manly, strong. Here you go. Yes, this'll do. So, what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case. I happen to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone, a gun for hire. Mmm. Mm -hmm. You have someone mm -hmm. just for you, Mr. Art. Yeah. Huh. What about the girl? Crimson Sunlight? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Crimson Sunlight. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry you guys don't have context. Uh, uh, okay, so long story short, Charles has a username somewhere called Charlie Crimson. It's no game or account or social media anywhere. It is on a very specific app, and it's very funny. It's just, it's just something we came across. <laughs> <laughs> I am tracking that girl. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money. And, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though. There has to be more to that whole thing than just acting as middleman, middlemen to look for some murderer. Hmm. Say, how safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws. The walls are soundproof. And I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay then. Wait. Soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? Oh, wait. They're quite talkative. The bastards. 
It'd be annoying without those walls. All right, then. Have you heard of Lord Lance Lavender? Nope. He's some big name from Kanye Vana. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's nano machines. Kanye Vania. I hate it so much. Con <laughs> Kanye West? Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if it's still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nano machines will initiate a reaction. Imagine a Kanye West song with Megalovania. Shut up. Stop. Essentially, they're just they'll just eat through the other person's body until there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nano machine rejection. Oh, kind of like cancer. Uh-huh. Well, turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living here, and he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract. Tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. <sighs> How about a cobalt velvet? Okay. Yeet. Hmm. Whenever I think of the word cobalt, I think of my first Nintendo DS. The DS Lite. Yeah, those are memories. Well, before it was broken, Charles. <laughs> there was a time. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I know I got this like gold uh, Nintendo DS. It was like the Legend of Zelda version. Oh, you lucky mother. Pay to win. Pay to win. I Here wish I kept that thing. I don't know why I got rid of it. Man, we were kids. We didn't realize the value. That I have a Game Boy still. Oh, you actually did it. What? Were you expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? No. So what made you accept the contract anyway? Keeping in mind all the risk you told me last time. He told me he wanted to see her again one last time or at the very least deliver her a message. You could have been lying. Yes, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I feel like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like not being able to find your daughter. You have a kid? What it's like to be apart from her. Not knowing what she's doing or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up, but then I started getting worried and went out to find her. I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody has seen her. Soon I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contacts began to grow. I finally found her, taking cover in some dumpster, unconscious from starvation. So yeah, I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So, how's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to her, to the, her from before, the bank incident, though, she seems slower, somehow. Either she's let her guard down, or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? It might not look like it, but I can take care of myself, bartender. You don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, 
I better go back to work before her trail goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? I don't know, Arby, you're the boss. Eh. <laughs> okay then, I want you, I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. Then working beforehand, the bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dress in your absolute best. We're having a party after all. Alright. We're skilled, by the way. He stored all of our things in his home because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home ready and bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on, wait a bit. I'll go with you. Oh, sure. Thanks. Zero mistakes. Let's go. I know, I know this small, small party, party is what you needed. There we go. It's a lot of money, my guy. I'll watch it go to the like next that. day automatically. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Merry Mega Christmas. Let us celebrate Santa's resurrection as the Mega Santa that saved Christmas from the Redmonds. What? Marketing. Yeah, we save. Cool. Well then, that was Valhalla Day 12. Part Brandon. <laughs> so, yes. uh, next time we come back, it'll be Christmas Day. We'll be introduced into a very interesting scenario. Well, guys. Oh, no. So then, take care. See you next time. Like, S subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that bell. Just slap it. I mean, I'll slap Brandon. Do whatever you want with it. I'll slap Brandon for you. For every, for every subscriber, I'll slap Brandon. <laughs> Shut up, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> See Welcome you next time. Welcome to our 1 million subscriber special. <laughs>